Welcome to our next edition of our Foundation Speaker Series. My name is Elizabeth Rosales, and today I'm excited to spend some time with Mr. Joseph Samuel Rogers, who is an English teacher at Monsignor Bonner and Archbishop Prendergast High School. Welcome, Joe. Hi, Liz. Thanks for having me today. I feel like such a big deal. I'm on this talk show. <laughs> well, it's great to have you. Uh, Joe has been working as a teacher for the past three years. Although he has had his heart set on teaching since elementary school, he never thought that his journey as a teacher would take him across the country and even the world and back again. Joe is a Pennsylvania Free Enterprise Week graduate, and he loves PFEW so much that after interning with us for four summers, he decided to keep coming back and volunteering as a company advisor for the past few years. Now, Joe, why don't you start off by telling us how you think PFEW has impacted you in your career, and what would you think is the most valuable lesson that you learned from PFEW? So, uh, first of all, thank you, Liz. Um, so, I graduated PFEW in 2013 uh, when I attended the program. I was going to my senior year at Central Catholic High School in Pittsburgh. Go Steelers, go Pirates, Penguins, you name it. And at the time, I did not, um, I, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. And hearing about this business camp when I was in high school, I thought, okay, well, uh, it'd be a chance for me to hang out with my friends this summer and um, do something fun. So, I did not know really why I was going to PFEW, and I didn't realize how much I would get out of it. Even when I was um, there at program and seeing the ways that the teams interacted with one another, um, hearing inspirational speakers give important life messages, I, it still didn't really sink in until um, years later when I was interning at PFEW and then going through my teacher preparation program. And that's pretty common when you, um, when you have an experience, you really don't appreciate it until maybe sometimes days, weeks, months, even years later, um, how much of an impact it made on you. Looking back, though, at my time at PFEW, I was elected CEO of my company, A3, um, back in 2013. And being elected CEO in many ways was, um, was like getting your teacher schedule for the first time, in meeting my classes being put into a room with 24 other people that I had no clue um, anything about them or what they need or how they operate. So that experience of leading a company for a week was a really good sample of what life in a classroom was going to be like. And you know, Liz, from your years at PFEW, that every single company, every single week is different. Mm -hmm. Just like my first period class this past year was very different than my fifth period class or my second period, my seventh period. Every class had different quirks, different needs, different types of students. And we all recognize that students learn differently. So one of the best um, skills I learned from PFEW was working in a team environment and really being flexible. And those are skills that helped me as a teacher um, years later. And so I'm really grateful for that. The other thing that PFEW was really helpful um, in modeling for me is what we call in education experiential learning, learning by doing, more hands-on activities. Um, traditionally, experiential learning was most commonly found in science classes by doing labs and experiments, but now educators are challenged to incorporate um, problem-based learning across the curriculum in English, in theology classes for Catholic school students, um, in math classes, um, in social studies classes. So what can we do as um, a class to solve this problem using the resources in front of us? And PFEW is an excellent example of that because you have students coming in maybe with very little business experience, and they're challenged to build a company from scratch. That's a, an excellent example of experiential learning, and that's something I work with every day in my field. So that was something else very helpful um, that PFEW did for me. That's great. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about your educational background, um, what it was or is currently your, your pathway through schooling, to become a teacher and how it led you to where you're at today and even moving forward. Absolutely. And for any um, student or even a, um, a career professional who's looking to get into the education field, the best thing I can recommend is to think very critically and carefully about where you're going to go um, for your program, what college or university. And that's really important because you want to go to a place that's going to give you the most experience um, to help you grow as a professional, to prepare you for entering a 21st century classroom. 
When I was applying to colleges, I had looked at about maybe a half dozen places and ended up applying to four colleges. And each one of those was very different in terms of their program offerings. Some schools had opportunities where you would major in a content area like English, social studies, or math, and minor in education, take a couple education classes in order to really build a liberal arts foundation. Okay, there's, yeah, that's, that's great. Liberal arts are very important. Other programs have you major in education and minor in a content area. So when you major in education, you're really learning about the theories and, um, and the, the experiments and research studies that help you learn about the students you're going to be teaching. Mm -hmm. Other programs, and the one that I eventually settled on, allowed you to major in a content area and education. So I went to LaSalle University in Philadelphia, and I majored in English and secondary education. And that provided provide me with a solid foundation, not only to learn about the growth and development of an adolescent to prepare to be a secondary educator, but it also gave me a very solid understanding um, of the English literary canon, American literature, British literature, global literature, also modern uh, literature, children's literature, all these important um, aspects of English um, I learned about, and that's helping me as I move into my next position as a junior American literature teacher. So I was really lucky in that regard to have two full majors that really gave me exposure to um, wide experiences across the curriculum. Well, that's great. That's good. Um, what would you think are um, some some skills or maybe some training that you have felt um, were helpful or, or necessary to enter into the, the field of education? The best thing for a student teacher to have before entering their own classroom is to get experience and, um, and to observe other professionals in the field. That's the best thing to do. And I know you see this all the time in your field, Liz, where... Um, uh, with the benefits of networking and, um, and mentorship. That is so important in education. And one of the reasons why I loved my program at LaSalle University is because starting in the freshman year, we were placed in schools to do some sort of activity. So in the freshman year, we were just tasked with observing and sitting in the back of the classroom, seeing what the teacher does and how they organize their classroom and manage that space. In the sophomore year, our placements got a little more challenging we were tasked with working in small groups. And in the junior year, we were teaching lessons in the classroom. And that was gradually building up to our student teaching experience, which was a full semester of full-time teaching. So I was teaching four classes um, of, of different levels and then um, taking night classes back at LaSalle to process that experience with my classmates. So the most helpful thing for um, that for me at least, and I'm sure it would help others, is to get experience from other teachers who have been in the field. As a professional teacher myself, I am constantly thinking back at what did my teacher do in high school? Or what did this teacher I worked with once say about this? And that experience is helping me build my own lessons and units for my students. Oh, well, that's great. And um, talking a little bit more about, you know, current events, you know, a lot, I know a lot of students and teachers have you know suddenly found themselves immersed in this world of virtual learning although I do know advancements in technology have slowly been started to be utilized um, in the classrooms why don't you explain a little bit um, from your perspective as a teacher what what does a, a 21st century classroom look like these days and possibly even now going forward 21st century how about a 2020 classroom <laughs> our, our classrooms really look differently um, mm -hmm. now than they did before As even the, um, the time frame from March 13th which was our last day of traditional in-person school to um, Monday the 16th very different what our classrooms look like right. I was really lucky at my previous institution where I was working at the time um, that we already had extensive use of technology. Every student had an iPad, which they used for their classes and for their textbooks. And I, as a teacher, already um, extensively used our class website. And that was the best thing um, for me that I was familiar with those two resources. And for those going into the field, I recommend that um, you look into what's out there in terms of technology, different apps that might be helpful for your students, familiar yourself with the school's website and a class website. Just be very comfortable with that because that was easier um, 
made it easier for me to transition my course from an in-person to an online class. The most challenging thing for me as an educator was learning the video conferencing equipment, whether that's Google Meet, Zoom, which is what we're using right now. And so, but the fact that I had the, the content down pat already, um, it was easy to learn the video conferencing equipment. And it really was an adjustment. I started very slow and maybe used one or two new apps for my students and gradually built, um, uh, built up my program. So the um, so teachers are finding it very challenging nowadays because we're doing things we've never been asked to do before. But like many teachers in the field, we're doing this out of love for our students. We want them to have the best education possible. Overall, um, my students were um, were very grateful and very impressed with what my school was able to do um, in less than three days. I was complaining to my coworkers on March 13th. Great, I have two days to turn around and um, redesign my course. Other school districts had much less time to do that, and some school districts didn't even have technology um, for their students to use. So we were really um, lucky in that regard. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's very good information. Um, is there is there any career advice or um, something that you received that was helpful to you, or maybe do you have any advice that um, you have for our listeners if they're interested in pursuing a career in education? The best advice I ever got was from my, um, he was an assistant principal at Central Catholic. Um, he's still there actually. And the advice was he told us every year on the first day of school, never be afraid to ask a question because seven other people in the, in the classroom have that same question. You can help them learn as well. Even as a third year teacher, I'm asking questions all the time. I'm going into my principal's office, I'm going to my department chair's classroom. You know, how would you do this? What do you think I should do about this? Have you tried this? Asking questions is the best way to, um, to get an answer and to help you grow as well. It's the best professional development experience. So when, teach, um, you know, when you're in a classroom and the teacher says, do you have any questions? Please ask something. Just like in an interview, interviewers love when you have questions for them to learn more about their role and, um, and the workplace that you want to join. The other advice um, I have is to be a collaborator. Education is all about collaboration. Um, I frequently collaborated with the other two teachers who taught the same class as I did. So I taught four sections of a particular class and the other teachers taught the other sections. And we worked um, extensively together so that our students, while learning differently, um, they were getting similar materials and had similar assignments. And so that was a great way to get everybody on the same level in terms of our curriculum standards. So collaborate on assignments, on activities, and to see what um, what experiences your coworkers bring, and maybe you can learn from them as well. I know the teachers I worked with loved some of the activities I did, and vice versa, and we use them in our own classrooms. Well, that's great. That's great advice. Um, I might have to think about taking that advice myself. I will admit that I'm I'm one of the kids that will sit quietly in class while the person next to me asks the question. <laughs> So, but that, that's very good advice. And, and thank you so much for joining us today, Joe. Um, it's been a real pleasure to spend this time with you. And there's no doubt about it. Your insight, tips, and advice shared today will definitely set up our viewers for great success. Thank you, Liz, for having me. It was an honor. <laughs> and finally, if you'd like to connect with Joe directly, his contact information will follow at the conclusion of this interview. And I know Joe would love to connect with you. Thank you for watching.